you doing there folks? It's your friendly neighborhood Baiters here for another Top 10. This week we're going to be looking at some crazy unique or just plain crazy fun weapon mods. Xbox players keep an eye out for this little fucker right here because that means that mod's available for the PC and the Xbox. Alright, let's get to average baiting baby. At number 10, we've got Custom Remington 1875 by The Seventh Dog. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love the old revolver look and feel in a Fallout game. It just reminds me of Fallout New Vegas, which makes me want to take my dick out and rub it in someone's hair. This mod adds a Remington-style revolver to the Commonwealth, which comes in four different variants. The first variant replaces the Western Revolver in Nuka World with roughly the same stats, which is great because aesthetically the Western Revolver didn't feel very Wild West at all. Actually, finding a new gun in the game in Nuka World that looked just like the .44 revolver in the Commonwealth was just lackluster as fuck. Like, when you get a new gun, you kinda want it to look new, or at least unique. Now this is the perfect weapon to force two gunners to rape one another out of fear. Don't be shy. Don't be shy, get oh right in God. there. Oh, I'm so sorry, man. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh no. Oh God. Oh God. Why is this happening? Now this variant also adds a legendary and overpowered version that can be found in the bank vault of the Commonwealth Bank near Fan Yule Hall. Fan Yule Hall. Sound it out. It's a word. It's just sound it out. Fan Yule Hall. Fan Yule Hall. Reading's really tough, people. The second variant still adds the revolver to the bank, but it's not legendary, which is good for people who want to replace her, but don't want anything too overpowered in the game. Now, the third variant makes the overpowered gun in the bank vault a unique weapon, and the Nuka World revolver is not a replacer at all, meaning it adds the revolver as a standalone instead. And the fourth and final variant adds the vanilla statted standalone revolver to the bank vault location and does not replace the Nuka World variant at all. So both of the last two variants are standalones versus the first two variants, which are replacers. There are a few different finishes to choose from in regards to this weapon, as well as a few different grips. So in terms of customization, this gun is a bit basic. However, even without a ton of customization options to choose from, this mod is an excellent addition to the game as a replacer to the Western Revolver that can be found in Nuka World, which in my opinion wasn't unique at all and made me feel like a dipshit running around the Wild West theme park with a revolver that looked like it was made in 1985. I rate this mod the one way Activision is still able to sell video games. Yeah, we figure we got at least two more remastered classics before we go completely bankrupt. At number 9, we have German MP40 by Evolution of Waffles. Now, if you're a fan of the guns the Germans used during the Second World War, then you probably will like this mod, as this mod adds a custom-made MP40 machine gun to the Commonwealth. Now, the gun itself looks great with its own custom models and textures. Also, old guns, they just fit in so well to the lore of Fallout 4 that this gun looks and feels very immersive. It actually looks like something you might have found throughout the Commonwealth. Now this gun may make you feel accidentally evil. Like when you accidentally threw your neighbor's cat through a barn door. <coughs> ah shit, I think I killed it. It was dark and I thought it was a raccoon with rabies. Now this automatic weapon also comes with its own customization options including 8 receivers, 6 barrels, 2 stocks, 2 mags, and 2 muzzles. You can also be sneaky as fuck with this antique by adding a suppressor to the barrel. Now the mod author has stated that he or she would like to add more aesthetic mods for this weapon in the future, which would really help this gun fit in better to Fallout 4, which is known for its customizability. Now to locate this weapon, all you have to do is go to the Red Rocket located next to Sanctuary and head into the Mole Rad Den located just out behind it. Also, if you don't like waiting and you want it right away, you can always craft this baby at the chem station under utilities. This gun is crazy unique and the only MP40 I've seen in Fallout 4 to date. This is an excellent addition to the game and I look forward to seeing more from this mod author in the future. I rate this mod the face everyone makes when they're getting fucked in the ass. 
At number 8, we have OTS-02 Caparis by Millennia. Now, there are several mod authors involved in bringing this weapon to life in Fallout 4 other than Millennia, including Doom-based, Hitman 47101, and Mr. Rifleman. Now, the hard work and collaboration of so much talent proved to add something really awesome to the game. Now, this mod adds the standalone version of the OTS-02 Caparis submachine gun to the game. This gun comes with its own custom sounds as well as its own custom animations for when the gun is equipped and when it's reloaded. Now, the animations look fantastic and really make this weapon stand out. This gun looks and feels so real. With the custom animations and the excellent meshes and textures, this machine gun almost jumps out of your screen. This gun looks so good that it'll actually have your enemies jerking off before you kill them. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh 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 yeah, oh yeah. This gun has a ton of customization options including 15 receivers, 4 mags, 2 sights, 1 suppressor, 3 zoom settings, 2 ammo types, and 1 laser attachment. So you can really change up the look of this gun from quiet and tactical to loud and completely naked. Also, it has been fully integrated into the level list so you can find it on fallen fuckers who clearly didn't know how to use it properly. I rate this mod the one thing you don't want to see when you dive into the deep end of the pool. Come on, dude, there's a fucking bear in the pool again! At number 7, we have Right-Handed Hunting Rifle by Assexass. This mod author is quickly becoming one of my favorite mod authors on the Nexus as everything he touches turns to gold in every form of the word. Every single mod this mod author has come out with is incredibly immersive, excellently crafted, and an incredible addition to the game. Now one of the biggest complaints I see on forums is that the bolts on the rifles are all left-handed. Now, some people may not have noticed this, but if you have and are right-handed and you've ever shot a rifle before, then this can really go gangbang on your level of immersion. Now I'm not ambidextrous, nor am I left-handed, so that means if I were caught up in a post-apocalypse where all the rifles were left-handed, I wouldn't be able to reload them, and I would have to sell myself off as some sort of sex slave in order to survive. Tied to the front of someone's war rig like a biological hood ornament giving out blowjobs for gummy bears and shit. This mod simply adds the option to add right-handed receivers and stocks to the vanilla hunting rifle in the game. It also adds the animations that go perfectly with the right-handed rifles. So you don't need to pretend you're something you're not anymore. Thanks to this mod author, you can kill things in the Commonwealth with the vicarious realism that we've all come to expect from 21st century gaming, enabling us to live out those sick, twisted fantasies innocuously in the confines of our own homes. The additional options for the hunting rifle are fully immersive and the animations are done so well. This is a crazy unique mod that people have been waiting for since day one. I would highly recommend this mod to anyone's playthrough of Fallout 4, especially if you're right-handed. I rate this mod three birds that are eating the fuck out of this lady. Teach that bitch to toss bread around all willy-nilly. At number six, we have the Briar Pistol by D. Magnus. Yet another excellent addition to the game from D Magnus. This weapon is from the Dark Forces video game series, which is a series I know very little about, but I imagine I could make something up given enough time. Now this gun really is one of a kind and functions great in the game. Not having this gun in your playthrough of Fallout 4 is a lot like having a hostage that nobody likes. Hey bro, he's got me hostage, man. Don't shoot, okay? Do you swear? Do you swear you won't shoot if we come out? Yeah, man, I promise. <laughs> Damn, dude! You just shot your buddy! Yeah, I didn't like him. It's just not the best situation to be in. Now, this mod is crazy looking and incredibly unique. It starts off as a pistol, but it can be modified into a rifle. Now, the reload animation for the pistol functions perfect, but I found the reload animation for the rifle didn't quite suit the gun. However, it could be a mod that I'm using in my game that conflicts with the proper animation because this really isn't an issue I had with any other mods by this author. Now, there are also four other modifications for this weapon that improve its efficiency and functionality. Now, this weapon can be found in the Hubris Comics building in the room where the script for the Silver Shroud is located. Now, this weapon uses fusion cells rather than any sort of custom ammo. Now, this girthy little pistol might not be known for its length, but it's thick enough to get raiders to think twice before they fuck with the owner. I rate this mod one photo that started every joke ever. Hey, why do you think that chicken there is crossing that road? I don't know, but I'm gonna dedicate my life to finding out. 
At number five, we have the Vorpal Blade by Gage Storm. Now this mod adds some sinister as fuck looking blades to the Commonwealth from Alice Madness Returns. I'll be honest, I had no idea what Alice Madness Returns was, but the blades looked so fucking sick, I didn't ask any questions. However, I did some reading on the Nexus page, and apparently this knife is featured in the mod author's Shadowland game in Fallout New Vegas. And instead of reusing the old meshes, the mod author actually made this weapon from scratch, and it looks incredible. Now this knife looks like something right out of a horror movie, or at the very least, something a crazy person would carry around to dexter the fuck out of people. It looks very realistic, and it's crazy unique with a design that stands out and makes a statement. It says, hey, come here and I'll stab the shit out of you. I'll stab your fucking eyes. So it's a completely original addition to Fallout 4. Now this weapon has a few different customization options. There are six blades, including a standard blade, a serrated blade, a cleaver blade, a serrated cleaver, a legendary blade, and a legendary cleaver. There are also four hilts, including a standard one, a hatter manufactured one, and two legendary variations of the standard and hatter hilts. Now if you want to acquire this weapon, you'll have to use the console commands as the mod author was unable to create an immersive way to acquire it in-game because of conflict issues. However, that will hopefully be resolved in the future as this is an excellent addition to the game and it would be great to be able to find it throughout the commonwealth. I rate this mod one bear that would do anything for honey. I will smell your ass crack for some honey right now. Hey, have you seen my cat? I will answer your question with yet but another question. What is that over there? <laughs> Say the name, her fuck face! <laughs> At number four, we've got the Laser RCW by Mike Moore. Mike Moore is a name becoming more and more popular amongst the modding community as he continues to shake things up and put out really interesting and well-crafted mods. This is just another beauty that he can add to his trophy case. This mod adds the Laser RCW from Fallout New Vegas to the Commonwealth. This is not just a simple port, no, no. This mod author actually built the meshes and textures from scratch and they look so good, I want to lick them. But that would be weird and it would leave a funky smudge on my computer screen, so I'm gonna resist the urge. This gun has a few different customization options, including three muzzles, three receivers, two grips, and three sights. This is the futuristic version of the Thompson come to life yet again. So you can murder your enemies like a space mafia hitman. Not having this gun in your playthrough is like thinking you're invisible when you're not. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, 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 oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, oh, oh yeah, yes, 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 oh god, yes, oh yes, oh, 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 oh yeah, oh yeah. What the fuck are you doing? Oh shit, dude, you can see me? I swear to god, man, I thought I was invisible there. It's just not good. If you want to acquire this gun, it can be found in fallen enemies who would normally carry submachine guns, as it has been added to that specific leveled list. So for instance, if you didn't do the mission where you have to rescue Valentine yet, this would be a perfect time to take a stroll through a bunch of old timey wise guys. This is an excellent and immersive addition to the game that is definitely crazy unique and crazy fun to use. I rate this mod one monkey that knows the crane kick from the Karate Kid. Come at me, bro. At number three, we've got the Widow Shotgun by Corbel Ho. Now this might very well be the best looking gun I've ever seen. Not just in Fallout, but like ever. This shotgun looks so nice, it makes me want to pat it in a rocking chair like a lifeless cat on a Sunday afternoon after an episode of Murder, She Wrote. This is the type of weapon that Smeagol would run off into the woods with and you'd never see him again. Now the detail that went into this shotgun is incredible. It even shows the shotgun cartridge in the gun when you look down the barrel of the weapon, which is like icing on the cake. Although you should never look directly down the barrel of a gun, or at least that's what the guy at the gun store keeps telling me, but what the fuck's that guy know, right? Am I right? This gun is a perfect solution to any altercation, even if your enemy knows martial arts. Yeah, motherfucker, I know karate! Watch ya! I regret nothing! In retrospect, I definitely overplayed my cards. Yeah, you did. 
Now this mod adds a standalone, modular, sawn-off, double-barreled, adjective-rich shotgun to Fallout 4. Now this gun has a few different customization options, including short and long stocks, six receiver mods, seven ammo types, multiple zoom customization, and two muzzles, including a suppressor. There are also custom sounds for both the loud and silence variants of the gun. It even comes with its own backstory to solidify its immersion in the game. Now if you want to acquire this sexy shotgun, then you'll have to search around Concord as it can be found in a hidden cellar in that town. Or if you don't want to look around and you're lazy as shit, you can just use the console commands like me. I rate this mod one photo of a one-sided relationship. Shut your face, this doesn't concern you. At number two, we have the Varmint Rifle by who else? Assxass. It seems like whenever something really immersive and well-constructed is added to the game anymore in terms of gun mods, it's always the same culprit behind the scenes. Assxass has done it again and added yet another great weapon mod to the Commonwealth. This time bringing back a fan favorite from Fallout New Vegas. It's a little smaller than you might recall, but it looks so sexy. It just makes me want to get completely naked and spoon with it, where I'm the little spoon. Is that weird? This gun has a ton of customization options, including two barrels, four receivers, one stock, two muzzles, four sights, and five weapon skins. Also, it has the option to add the mod author's custom blue tape to the stock, which has become his signature on his weapon mods. Now all the weapon skins are very unique looking, but a few of them are specialized camo that make them blend into the environment. So you gotta be extra careful when you're using those camo custom skins that you don't lose your rifle in the woods. Oh god damn it! Where is it? Also the bolt of the gun is on the right side and it comes with its own custom animation. So you can actually shoot this gun like a right hander. Do you hear that? That's the sound of someone at Bethesda just shitting themselves. Wait! You can make a rifle reload on the other side? What the- Now if you want to find this epic gun, it is located on enemies and vendors as it has been added to their respective leveled lists. Also, there are two legendary variants of the gun placed throughout the world with custom skins. So now you need to just get out there and be somebody and find one of those unique rifles. Now if only I had one of those unique weapons, maybe girls would want to touch my penis. I can't be certain, but it's worth a try. I rate this mod that one moment when you're pretty sure you failed as a parent. At number one, we have Any Mod, Any Weapon by Lucas God. This mod allows you to craft and attach any weapon mod to any weapon, so it's basically all in the name with this one. This mod makes no sense at all, and it might actually affect the non-unique weapons carried by enemies you encounter in the Commonwealth or in store inventories. However, this mod allows players to be extremely creative when it comes to modifying their weapons, allowing players to use all of the vanilla gun mod assets in the game to conjure up their very own fucked up masterpiece. Finally, with this mod, I'll have a gun that I can show off to all my friends. Hey, you kids want to see something? Look at this! Yeah, that's pretty cool, right? Y'all want to touch it? My dad says we gotta stop hanging out with you because you're 40 years old and you hang out with a bunch of kids. You're a fucking loser. God damn it, Timmy, you ruined it again. Timothy, I ain't afraid of you. You're eight years old. I'll punch you right in the goddamn chest. Now, when you use this mod, you may very well create something that no other player playing Fallout 4 has ever used or ever will use. I mean, the possibilities are endless. And this mod is extremely fun to use. The custom weapons now will inherit the base stats and attributes from the base weapon. So if you want a shotgun that shoots mini nukes, you'll have to start with a fat man and go from there. There are still some restrictions. Now for instance, you can't attach a muzzle to a barrel that doesn't support muzzles. But you can always change the barrel to one that actually supports muzzles and then use that. So really, this isn't a major issue. The way the projectiles look and behave is usually inherited from the muzzle. That means if you attach a laser weapon muzzle, the projectiles will behave as lasers even if the gun is using a different kind of ammunition. In no way is this mod immersive and it can be kind of annoying actually when you're trying to add a vanilla mod to its own asset and having to search through dozens of mods with the same name. However, it is a crazy unique addition to the game that adds variety to Fallout 4 like no other. I would highly recommend anyone give this mod a try at least once, if nothing else, just because it's crazy fun to create fucked up weapons. I rate this mod the body posture I use when answering stressful questions. 
I've never even heard of this word cat that you're referring to, okay? I have no idea what that is. Please look directly into my butthole when you're talking to me. Thanks again for watching, guys and girls. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to come back and average bait some more, be sure to touch that subscribe button with your genitals. Also, be sure to check us out on Twitter or Instagram for the latest updates on our newest content. Hope to see you all again next time for another Top 10.